Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with his good friend, Mr. Jonathan Twomley. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing super great today, Michael. How are you? I'm doing well, man. Thank you for bringing that ultimate checklist to my channel. Uh, I'm going to, again, put it in the, the link below. Uh, I'm going to go get that shortly and uh, just way cool. So, uh, But I got I to gotta ask you something. So the Fed did what you and I expected last week, raised 75 basis points. We kind of expected it. But wow, did rates crash Thursday? crash yeah. friday they're crashing again today what the heck is going on we got the fed funds rate up 150 basis points uh in two meetings uh but the 10-year notes went from 3.49 down to 267 i don't get it uh what the heck is going on any idea i mean the only way that i can make sense of this is that you know the the higher rates just caused everybody to just stop you know doing business. I mean, it's not, that's, that's a little extreme, but I think what you've seen is like, you know, the mortgage rates shot up. So people just stopped buying real estate, right? Yeah. It's, and so it, the, the, the demand destruction for that was so strong that it, it caused the rates to, to fall again. Right. And I think there's also, you know, there's a lot of mixed signals out there as to what's actually going on in the economy, but there, I think enough of wall street, it believes that there's a recession coming and they're now pricing that in. So they're, they're, they believe that, well, the recession is going to hit. The Fed is going to be forced to cut rates again. Soon. And, they, they, yeah, they're, soon. They're yeah. like Q1 soon. Yeah. And then, and so they're pricing it in now. Of course, you know, Powell said something the other day about like, you guys are all wrong. We're raising rates. Like, I, you know, you guys are just, you're just Not, wrong. <laughs> you're just wrong. Like you're just wrong. We are go going to raise rates. I, I mean, honestly, I believe him because I, I think the Fed has for 10 years now wanted to raise rates to a more normal rate. They think yeah. they've got, got their chance now. They, they, they tried it in 2018 and they, they, they chickened know, out, they chickened out and, and they know they chickened out and now they're determined not to chicken out. And uh, I, I think that they, they feel like whatever recession is coming is going to be a mild one, mm -hmm. and maybe if maybe they ease rates a little bit, but I think they want to they want to get enough of a, you know, yeah, they want a cushion. They yeah. want enough of a cushion between whatever the rate is and zero, so that if we do have something really bad happen again, yeah. they can cut rates and it'll be meaningful, Correct. right? So, and I think they also realize that this this problem of artificially low rates is just creating too many distortions in the economy, yeah. including stuff like what we talked about in the first episode yeah. where like mom and pops are getting squeezed out, right? The little guy is getting squeezed out by the big guys with access to cheap capital, right? And people can't get on the ladder because the prices have shot up yeah. so much, right? The, the wealth creation that has always been available to regular people by buying real estate, like in their neighborhood, you know, you buy your house and you save up enough money to buy the house next door or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. That is people are now losing out on that to the big guys because of where prices have gone. And that's related to interest rates. And I think the fed finally sees the error of their ways and that they've got to get control over this. So yeah. I think they're going to keep on pushing rates. So, but at least in the short term, there is this now, you know, uh, the, Wall Street and the Fed are kind of, you know, thinking different things. No, oh, it's and, it's the big. Yeah. I mean, that's I have a couple of Wall Street guys and stock guys on one on Sunday, one on Monday. It's funny. I almost can tell what 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 you play in, right? If you're in the stock market, you generally think deflation is coming. You think the nine point one CPI is going to magically melt away to four percent this year. Mm. That's what they think. Uh, and then, and basically the Fed's almost done. That's what they believe. And then I talked to all my macro econ guys, which is where I play all the time and why, frankly, I'm a horrible stock investor. It, we're all like, 9-1, okay, maybe there's some deflation and some bullwhip effect, some of this nonsense. So we're going to go from 9 to 7, but 7 is sticky. So the Fed's got a lot of work to do. It, it, I've never seen it. I've never seen the camp so divided because one camp mm -hmm. is wrong, right? It's not like, hey, there's a middle ground and... We can all be right, all be wrong. No, one of us is going to be wildly right, and one of us is going to be wildly wrong, and somebody's going yeah. to lose a lot of money. Well, there's also like the third argument, which is that the inflation really doesn't have anything to do with cheap money, or only has, or only part of this is cheap money, and part of it is 
bottlenecks in the economy, which are going to take a lot longer, which basically doesn't matter what's going on with interest rates at all because the bottlenecks exist. And it's going to take a lot longer to sort those things out because a lot of that involves like reshoring manufacturing to like at least North America, if not the United States. Right. And that'll be wildly inflationary. And getting, getting out of China. Right. Because, because, you know, as long as China insists on like not using foreign vaccines and just shutting down its whole economy every time there's a COVID flare up, well, it be- it's now made itself into an unreliable producer, right? Correct. So you have, you got to go somewhere else. And I was actually, not to hijack this conversation, but I've got a really close friend here who has a fashion business and she manufactures dresses in China. And she's now told me like, I'm not manufacturing in China anymore because I can't rely on it. So she's looking, you know, now she's like, we're looking to Egypt and we're looking to, um, you know, she said Vietnam, unfortunately, is a mess because of COVID too. Mm. But like other places like that, that where the where the cost of production is is reasonable and, you know. It's Higher not, than China, China, but you you get more, you get more reliability. So the yeah. trade-off is even. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. So. Yeah. The other thing that I'm seeing going on again, you, your experience brings, you know, there's a lot of, you have a lot of history with Japan, right? Yeah. Uh, the one thing I was thinking about when I'm seeing the 10 year treasury fall, because I think we could be entering a worldwide recession. I think China's in a recession, but they won't admit it. I think Europe is in one or it will be one soon and the U S we'll see, but it really boils down to we're the cleanest dirty shirt again. Yeah. And if you're afraid of your currency, taking a hit like the euro right it's on parity it's on parity folks yeah. so maybe there's just a lot of foreign money bailing or piling into the 10 year well, yes that also i mean thank you for raising that point because that is absolutely a, a possibility here i which think I that's had, which happening. i hadn't thought of but when you say it, it makes sense because i was also reading about the inflows of foreign capital into u.s real estate right yeah. And so if, yeah, they've been they've been off for like two years and now they're suddenly back on. Yeah. So something like sixty billion dollars has recently flowed into US real estate from abroad. And if that if it's going into real estate, if the real estate investors are bringing their money to the US again is like the cleanest dirty shirt, you know that the equities investors and the bond investors from overseas are also doing the same oh, thing. By right? by a factor of 10. Yeah. And the higher, I mean, and the weird thing is like, you know, so the higher bond yields. Right, attracted more money into bonds, which then drives the yields down. Right, so exactly. It, so it's so the bond yields are still higher than the bond yields in Europe and Japan and whatnot. Right, so and you don't for, have the currency risk. Right, right. So you've got all those. You know, if you think if you think the the dollar is going to continue to appreciate against those other currencies, you're like, well, I, I'll make it up on the other. You know, if, if the bond prices fall well i'll make it up on the exchange rate when i when i repatriate the money so it's just you know it's interesting to see how this is affecting stuff right so then the next question is does it does it light the 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 real estate market on fire again if you know if this pulls down mortgage rates that's exactly what i was going to ask you like how low does this have to go before the real estate market lights on fire again well, I mean, it really, I guess it's going to depend on the banks and their spreads, right? Exactly, so exactly. Uh, where they see things, I mean, if they, if they see this as an opportunity to like have fat. some fat spreads, right, then it won't change anything. Um, but, you know, if they start lowering their spreads again and interest rates come down, then you're going to see just the money start flowing back in. Yeah. Right? So, so I can tell you about, so I, I don't know what you're seeing in the commercial spot, but residential. Uh, residential peaked middle of June, 6.13 was the, the highest average that I saw. Yeah. Uh, on Friday, we were under five. Wow. Uh, I think it ticked up a little bit Monday, Tuesday. Might be It might be under five again. So that's a point. I yeah. mean, that's like real money. It's yeah. like an eighth. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, we're seeing something similar in commercial rates as well. Right. I, I don't know when the peak was and the peak didn't get that high. So we're nowhere, nowhere near as high as you know, six, but rates were rising enough and that people were getting, you know, in the middle of their deal, they were, you know, what the deal they, the loan they closed on was not the loan they thought they were getting. <laughs> yeah. Now you're seeing a little bit, a little bit of easing Revert, with, yeah. with the rates, right. On the, on the current deal I'm working on right now, 
you know, we were quoted, and this is from a local bank, not agency debt, um, but we wanted we went with the local bank for for various reasons. They quoted us five point two five, right, mm-hmm. on the mortgage. The actual loan we're getting is five. There right. You go. So so it is down a little bit. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting. I I really what I. Uh, I've been thinking about this for a while because I could I couldn't explain last Thursday and Friday. I was like, the Fed just raised seventy five points, and and I talked to a mortgage broker. They went down a half by Friday. Wow! Like in in rate, I'm like, I don't get it. I really think what's happening is we're seeing foreign foreign investors pile into the U.S. Treasury at unheard of rates. That's what I think is going on. Yeah, I, I, that that makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. And yeah. I also just want to point out one thing, and people may be asking themselves, well. Why are commercial rates lower, right, mm-hmm. than than residential rates? And the reason is because of which instrument they're keying it off of, right? The 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 residential lenders, their spread is over the thirty, right? Mm-hmm. Because they're right because they're you're giving you a thirty year mortgage. Correct. Commercial rates, it's off the ten. So the ten year money is cheaper because it's a you know it's a shorter time horizon. You're getting mm-hmm. your money back faster, so it's less risky. Mm-hmm. So that so that's what they're so they're basing they're uh basing their uh rates off of the off of the 10 year treasury yeah. and they're building the spread over that yeah this is just a wild time again if you would have asked me wednesday what would happen to rates i certainly wouldn't have guessed they'd be down yeah. half a point yeah. by friday <laughs> yeah i mean listen and the same thing is happening with gas prices too right yeah. gas prices are are falling um, you know, pretty quickly. I like yeah. you know, 47, 48 days in a row. Yeah. Yeah. I've been surprised, like literally like didn't fill up my gas tank for a week. And like, I went back and it was like, Oh, the, wow. That's, <laughs> you know, that's, so. that's noticeably cheaper. Yeah. 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 So. yeah it's, a, it's a wild time. It's a lot of fun. Well, Jonathan, do me a favor, hold up the ultimate checklist one more time, folks below uh, the only line in the description is going to be the bitly link to this. Uh, you need to get it. Uh, you need to prepare yourself for some opportunities that are come. Uh, Jonathan, thank you for being here each week. I know that's going to help a lot of people. Absolutely. This is one of the highlights of my week, Michael. And, uh, you know, I always am bummed out when I have to miss it. So I'm, I'm glad to be here this week. Awesome, buddy. Thanks again for all you do. Yeah, thank you.